We're live on YouTube. Hello, yes. everyone. Happy, happy Sunday. Gordana, happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday, Lucas, and happy Sunday to everyone. Yes. Uh, yeah. This Sunday is going to be beautiful because we are going to explore the archetype of the magician. Yes. A place where I really live in my consciousness <laughs> because the archetype of ma the magician is all about inner wisdom, mm. tapping into the creative force within us, this creator, this changer of events. So mm -hmm. I'm so excited about this. It's going to be a beautiful Sunday. We were supposed to talk about it last Sunday. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was going to say. We were supposed to. Today. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, and I'm so glad we are. We we ended up um, we ended up talking about it, but it just happened to be on on Clubhouse. So I'm glad we were able to uh, fix and figure out our. Mm -hmm our broadcasts. And so I just verified we're on, we're on YouTube and we're all good to go. Um, yeah. you know, one of the things I, I was talking to Lauren, my wife about this this morning about the magician. And we talked about a couple of weeks ago, the warrior and how we feel it in the chest and heart. And when we freeze, when we get in fear and we have ego constrict and we freeze our hands. And I was thinking about the magician, like is the open hand, like opening back up. And my wife was saying that babies, cause we have a newborn, their hands stay closed until I think week seven or eight. And we're about to enter week seven. And then all of a sudden they open up. And I thought that's so fascinating. Like what the body is like almost ready to create. create. And here we are talking about the magician and I find it all if I can move my hands and talk with my hands, if I'm on stage and I'm speaking, or if I'm in a meeting and I have, I feel confident enough and I'm in myself to move my hands, mm -hmm. I feel like so much magic is created from it. It's almost like opening up, tapping into this energy field of the magician within your subconscious mind. Yes. And when you're allowed to dance with that energy, it goes through you. So it goes through the hands. And I'm the same. I can't speak unless I use my hands. And I'm <laughs> always right. doing things with my hands. So I think there is a connection. There's a bodily connection to the archetype, which is the yes. magician here. And there's a bodily connection to all the archetypes. But before we you know, go into the magician as the archetype, I think that a lot of us wants to know what is an archetype. What, mm. what is that? So and good. the way I understand it, this is a term that um, Jung coined. This is his way of looking at our psyche. Because mm. as we are born with a heart and yeah. lungs and a brain, this is pre-birth. In mm. Mother's wound, we are created in a way so that we will have all the organs in place when we're born because that's what we need in order to survive here. And right. the way he sees it, it's almost like the archetypes are organs in our psyche and they're mm -hmm. also free birth. And when we come into this world, they live in our subconscious mind. There is uh, an mm. energy field. Each and every one of them is like an energy field of information, which we are able to tap into when we are in a relaxed state or when we are, when the circumstances forces us into it, so yes. to speak. There are already patterns that are common to all of us. So yeah, last week we talked about the warrior or the week yeah. before that, we talked yeah. about the warrior. That is one of the archetypes. Mother is another archetype, but we're mm -hmm. not going to talk about that now. We're going to talk about the warrior, uh, the, the magician, the lover, and the king or queen. Yes. But there are lots and lots of archetypes. So you could almost say that an archetype is, a, is an energy pattern or a field of information that lives in our subconscious mind, mm. the collective subconscious mind. And it is common to all. And when you tap into that energy, it expresses itself through you, your ego and your, your soul and spirit and manifests a unique pattern in this world. Yeah. So 
in our psyche, our subconscious mind, the pattern is there and it's the same for all of us. And when you tap into it, it is filtered through you into this world and your way of expressing that pattern. Yes. These patterns, like the magician, when you tap into that, you become the knower in your mm. own world. You yeah. become the wisdom keeper in your own world. Things yes. that you subconsciously have inherited, you will be able to tap into that. Yes. So you were talking about the hands moving and feeling the archetype within you, the archetype of the magician in your body. I feel like that is the simplest way to tap into the, the different types of archetypes. Right. And this is why it's important to ask yourself, if I imagine myself as the magician, where do I feel it in my body? Hmm. So we've established it's in the hands. You feel it in the hands. You start yes. moving because you're changing the direction of things. Yes. You're tapping into the magical part of you. You're tapping into the infinite wisdom that lives within you. Yes. For me, it's always the pineal gland. Hmm. As soon as I see myself as the magician of my own world, as the one driving, as the one directing myself, I, I tap into the, the pineal gland in the center hmm. here. And it's almost like a tickling feeling in my back, the back of my neck. And when I do that, I can feel hmm. that I'm downloading the, the, the wisdom that the archetype of the magician contains, yes. the, the, the information pattern. Yes. So for me, it's the pineal gland. And where it, for you, it was the back of your neck? Yeah, right? the back. Yeah. So it's in the back of my head. It's like a throne or an observer of, mm -hmm. I can feel it right now, just closing my eyes and sitting here. It's mm -hmm. observing me doing what I'm doing. And it's almost like, and I love, we've talked about this before, Michael Singer and the Untethered Soul, but he talks about most people live as if they're in a movie theater and they don't remember they're in a movie theater. They're in this movie, they're consuming this information, their, their senses are engaged. But as soon as someone coughs or sneezes, you're like, and you look around like, wait, I'm sitting in a dirty room <laughs> with a whole bunch of strangers. And he said that, that separation from being in it to observing where you are, observing yourself in it. Sure. That's all of a sudden when I read that, I was like, I get that. Cause that's where I live back here. When I'm in my power, when I can detach and be, and there's so many circumstances where I've engaged with people or have had meetings. I think I talked, I don't know what live I talked about this on, but one of my TV reporter jobs at this TV station, I think I talked about this. I did this story that, I thought would be funny and it did not come across funny. It came across really goofy and stupid. And this general manager at the station was six, eight, really big man. I'm six, three, but much bigger man than I. And he had me sit in this chair. He brought me up to his office. He had me sit in this chair that was so low that my knees almost hit my chin. And he being this already big man sat in this chair that was so high and he's talking to me like this. And I'm like, and I've never forgotten. It was almost like the physical representation of a powerless or a power structure dynamic. And so when I remember that and I can wait, like I'm not in that position, but I can separate and be like, hold on. And I can level myself back up by being an observer as the magician in my own world. Then it doesn't matter if someone's a hundred feet taller than I am. Mm -hmm. They're not greater than yes. I as the magician in that archetype. Absolutely. What you're saying here, it's almost like you have a shield from behind. Mm. And I feel it in my pineal gland. I can feel how I shield myself because I am, I am directing my attention to the mm. future. That is where I want to shift things and change things. Yes. I usually love to tap into the magician within me when I have something that I feel I do not know how to solve. Hmm. So trying to solve it in my mind, it becomes a very, very small place for my imagination to play. So I tap into this feeling of opening up with my pineal gland and I feel it in my hands. And then I just ask the question, what would the magician in me do? Hmm. And I allow things to come the information 
of the solution is always, always there when I mm. do that. Because the way I see the archetype of the magician is that it, the, this archetype connects us to synchronicity. And this is why it looks like magic. Because when you're connected to the synchronicity, the underlying synchronicity that actually keeps everything together, there is this positively perpetuated synchronicity, and then there is this negatively perpetuated synchronicity. If you are unconscious of that you're the creator of your own world, then you will probably be tapped into the negative perpetuating synchronicity in your life. Mm, so things yeah. that you don't want will pop up in your reality because it's the negative reinforcement of your thoughts. And the synchronicity is there to help you be at the right place in time and space. Mm. And your order might be of a negative kind. So you will have this negative thing. When right. you tap into the magician within you, you actually tap into the positive um, positive side of the connection to the synchronicity. So mm. you are in charge of what is happening. You're the one bending the fabric of the universe. Mm. You're the one directing the course of things. Yeah. And you yeah. do that in your imagination. And when you start doing it, you feel the power, the power that you didn't have when you were sitting with me. That's person. right. Yes. Because you're open and you feel the power that you actually can change things. Hmm. And that's when the solution always pops up in my mind. I know how I need to do it. Hmm. It's one thing about the magician is not aggressive. It's not the warrior energy. It, the warrior brings that power forth from the chest and, and really funnels it straight yes. forward. Yes. The magicians, it's almost like a cyclical energy or it's moving energy. And I think of watching people do Tai Chi and what they're doing with their hands and they're moving this mm -hmm. space around or, um, the movie Star Wars, where Obi Wan Kenobi, who would be the magician archetype to Luke Skywalker, tells mm -hmm. those the, he moves his hands like this, and he says, "These are not the droids you're looking for." And it's just a subtle movement, but just the moving that energy, mm -hmm. being able to do that, it creates such a beautiful space in front of us where anything's possible. And I think that's what we're forgetting when we're in fear-based ego. It just makes that there is no other choice than to submit to the, the threat of what's presented by the ego. When we stop and ask, what would the archetype of the magician do? Infinite other possibilities, and it opens up a world of creation. Yeah, and I love knowing that this archetype is a, a, an energy field within me and within mm -hmm. you and within everyone. So it's not a question of finding it. It's not a, f a question of creating it. It's not a f figment of my imagination. Maybe it is because everything is a figment of my imagination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It this way. But it is there. So it's, it's not a question of looking for it in, in, you know, in the darkness. Yeah. When, you, when you use your free will, when you are connected to what it is that you want and you say that, what would the magician in me do? You're mm. actually tapping into the same frequency as that. And you're yes. allowing yourself to use that information. The yeah. information is always there. And it's not an information. It is a question of a, of a state of being, a frequency that is opening your mind to more than the fear around you. And as you said, when we, when we are in fear, we cannot see the solution. Right. Everything either is too narrow so we can't see anything or we the all we see is chaos hmm. and when all you see is chaos this is a signal that you need to tap into your magician within you yeah. because what the magician does is bring order in that chaos right right we we are in such a um interesting time for instance we're talking about the magician and the root of magician is magi or the plural of mad magi is the plural of mega and and mega is the magician it's the movement of the magician well 
as I'm reading all these books, Satanic Bible talks about Mega and the Bible talks about the three Magi and the magician and Donald Trump creates this movement of the mega movement. I'm like, what, what is, forget politics and forget these particulars. What's really happening on a consciousness level? Like what, what is being remembered within us? I think as humanity, regardless of the, the stealing away by these systems and personalities and stuff, I think humans are waking back up to, we've talked about this before, that we don't have five senses, we have six senses. And this we probably have more than six senses, but this sixth sense of influencing, creating, and moving with this ether-like environment that we find ourselves in, just reminding ourselves in that, it takes the physical world and reduces its threat. It takes the the boss or the partner or a person and just minimizes them to not greater than oneself, that they are just co-creating with us. And when we come back into the magician, we can say, what do I want to create with this situation? What do I want to create with this person or this dynamic? Mm. And then it becomes fun. I think yes. the magician has fun. Yes. That's the whole point, because it's, as you say, it is remembering that you're the co-creator of this world. Yes. When you are in a place of victimhood or you feel like nothing is working out for you, you have forgotten who you truly are. You mm. have forgotten that you're the co-creator of this world. This world cannot exist unless you perceive it. Mm. So it has to be perceived through you and the magician is like a gatekeeper to this. If yeah. you tap into it, it opens the gate and you understand your part of the creation, your part of this reality. Yes. What happens when you are in fear or when you feel victimized, you can't see your part in it. Mm. So when you tap into the magician, when you ask yourself, what would the magician in me do? And just feel it there are no boundaries because it's about magic yes it's about miracles it's about things that we do not know how we do them yes when you watch a magician on tv you don't know what they did but it brings you joy because something was created out of nothing yeah that yeah. is how this world is created it is created out of nothing yes. into something in this so when you tap into the magician within you you become aware of your co-creative power in this mm -hmm. world. Now, imagine if everyone tapped into the magician within them. They would understand that, wait, why do we, why do we have to suffer here? We can create a world of joy instead yes. because that is the power that we have. If we tap into the positive side of this and we allow it to go through us, we understand that we can create anything. Yes. It is our belief systems that are creating it. And we hold the belief systems. Right. That's the whole magic in this. So when you tap into it, it's easy for us to see ourselves, you know, moving energy back and forth because this is the image that we've been taught mm -hmm. of how a magician works. Right. But actually it's enough to think that I am the co-creator of this and how do I want this to be? Yeah. Yeah. Even the thought of moving hands without moving hands is enough to create that. Yeah. It's a yeah. notion of dance or, or dancing with the flow. This is another trait of the, the, the archetype of the magician is that you go with the flow and you direct it. Hmm. So you relax into the flow, but you direct the flow because you know that it cannot go in a different direction than you say. Yeah. That is what your free will is. And we live in the free will zone. So you need to know where you're going and why you're doing this. And then going with that flow through the magician within you. Right. Right. Like the warrior, we were talking about that. That's the executioner of the thoughts that you have. That is the one acting upon it. Yes. The magician is the one driving. The magician is the one behind the curtains. The magician is the one telling the warrior what to do right right or not to do the um the marvel series the marvel universe up until i don't know 
in, in uh, Endgame did a good job bringing all these archetypes and characters. And you have um, you have th- you have all these archetypes. But um, Doctor Strange is one that I've really enjoyed from the mm-hmm. magician side. Mm-hmm. And he they ask him he can see all these timelines, and they ask him which. Um, what's the probability of us winning this? And he said, only there's only one timeline where we win this. And it ended up that they found that. But I like that we can go to ourselves and tap into ourselves and tap into that wisdom. And I think I was reading um, synonyms for the magician. Mm -hmm. I would read these is um, the magician archetype goes by many names, sage, shaman, holy man, wise old man, ritual, elder, knower, seer, prophet, wizard, alchemist. Mm-hmm. And those words, I mean, I even, you know, read the Bible so many times and raised, the Bible is mostly prophets mm-hmm. telling people to return back to their natural state and there's gone astray. Well, that's in a, a form outside oneself. But if we looked at that same archetype, say the knower inside of us or the seer or the prophet or this mm-hmm. says, return back to yourself, come back and reclaim the power in yourself. And like, Oh yeah, that's good. I forgot. I got a little too distracted or I was too pulled out of myself, but my, my magician will always remind me to return back to mm-hmm. the source, sense. the yeah, center. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah why the magician feels like um someone who is beyond time and space is because when you are tapping into the archetype of the magician you can actually go back in time and change stuff so that Mm -hmm. it will work for you in the future because the magician is the wisdom keeper in you Mm -hmm. wisdom can be something you acquired in your past It can be something that you will acquire in your future, or it can be the infinite wisdom that you actually contain in the now moment if you're Mm -hmm. tapped into eternity, being present in the now moment. So time has no effect on the magician. This is why it's so extremely magical. I I think I write about this. There is a whole chapter in my book called The Magician, uh, let me see. no, not the magician, the wisdom keeper. Mm. I'll find it. And I'll, uh, I'll okay, read you're it. You know, yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, one of the things as you're looking for that, if, if mm-hmm. those watching on Netflix, there is a really, it ended up being a beautiful movie. I did not anticipate it being a beautiful movie, um, but it's the Adam project and it's this new movie with Ryan Reynolds and yes, um, yes I've seen it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that, Oh, so you you saw the movie? Yes, I so did. The dad is talking to him, and then his younger self is there observing, and he's like, "It's okay, I love you, I love you," and he want to accept it. Mm-hmm. It was these parallel times of I, I I started crying. I was like, "Why am I crying?" I mean, it really was a touching moment. But it reminds me of this where the magician can access those multiple timelines or those different times. Mm-hmm. and bring it all into one place and that is the magic of going back and changing the past changing the future to change the present we tell the story differently in my past to be in the present which helps me calibrate to create a new future mm-hmm. it's magical it's incredible yes because, as i said because it transcends time and space yeah. also you can use your imagination to meet yourself as a child which means that if you meet yourself as a child in your past, you have changed the energy that the, the child in your past contains. Mm. And it shifts your future because you've changed your past. It is really magic if you can, if you, if you know how to find this magician within you and openness and willingness is really important here because you can shut yourself down from exploring all these things. If you say, oh, this doesn't work. Mm-hmm. You have to be open to the possibility that you actually can travel in time in your imagination yeah. and meet yourself as a child. Yes. And when you do that, for me, I've done it several times and I incorporate this little girl within me. I never leave her in my memory. I bring mm-hmm. her back with me here. And 
she has the space, a room in my heart where she lives all the time. So I don't have to feel the loneliness that I felt as a child because I came from now and saved her there and she's with me now. You see how it goes back and forth and that's the magic in this. Hmm. To understand that anything is possible, like becoming a child again, believing that anything is possible. I remember that I was walking down the stairs and I think I was maybe seven or eight years old and I thought to myself like, I think I can fly. I don't need to walk down the stairs. I can fly down. And it, I felt this tingling feeling in my neck and I was at the last step. And I'm thinking, how did I get here? To me, it seemed like wow. I was flying. Wow. And I don't know, maybe I did flew or fly. I don't know. But yeah. if I stop myself as a grown up, when I think at this and I think now I probably jumped or something like that, it kills the magic. And it creates a, a reality which is vibrating on a lower frequency. Going hmm. So allowing myself to you know, be in this energy of the magician. I have to believe this, otherwise it won't happen to me. Right. That's the thing when you tap into the energy. Hmm. And it's, I was thinking about reading the chapter, but it's, it's, a, it's quite a long chapter. Let me just see if I can find, because I talk about, um, I talk about an old man who called himself a wisdom keeper. And mm -hmm. he was talking about the pyramids. And I saw this in, in a program. And I loved the way he was talking about himself and keeping the wisdom. And I felt mm -hmm. like he was a magician because nothing, nothing, he, he had the answer to anything. And for me, it's like, this is the archetype of the magician. Yeah. So I decided, and I'll read what I decided uh, here. Yes, I decided to call myself a wisdom keeper because I, like the smiling Hakim, Hakim was his name, by the way, mm. collect my experiences and explorations in the physical world and extract the wisdom embedded in everything I encounter, regardless of whether it is an obstacle or pure joy. Mm. I honor everything that has happened in my life and use the knowledge and wisdom I have gathered to elevate my own consciousness. Mm. And by sharing my knowledge with others who allow my thoughts into their reality, I thereby also help raise our collective consciousness. Mm. And then I end this chapter with the truth thought number 222, where I say, you're the keeper of your inner wisdom. Dive into it, explore it, enjoy it, share it. Hmm. When we allow ourselves to dive into the wisdom keeper within us, we actually tap into this archetype, which is there in yeah. every single one of us. Yes. And when we do that, we come up with the solutions that we need every yeah. single time. This is a bulletproof thing. Yeah. You, you cannot fail with it if you can learn how to tap into it. And as I say, the fastest way to do it is to start imagining the magician within you the energy of the magician within you in a childlike way see yourself as being able to do anything like standing on the top of a mountain and just saying i want this and it is created in that second yes. feeling that energy within you you tap into the magician within mm. you. a couple things come to mind <laughs> jesus said Unless you become a little child, you may not enter the kingdom of heaven. Yes. And everyone's, no one's actually sufficiently in the Christian world ever given um, that I've heard and studied. And I have studied, I want to say almost at all, yeah. ever a good explanation until I came out of it to learn this world that we have to go back and reclaim to be the child again. We will, we must live in it as a child, which is why the narrative of um, the lost boys in Peter Pan, they never age, they stay in this, but what do they create? They create magic and there's fairies and pirates and it's a game all the time and they're creating, but that's somewhere else. When in reality, that actually gets to be here now. And this whole boring matrix system, and, and it is so boring. 
the machine. I wrote about this um, yesterday. I want to re read this. The machine is so boring. And I said, the machine isn't designed to grant freedom. Humanity will soon remember this and we will reclaim that reclaim our freedom from the machine for it's the machine that needs humanity and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And this matrix system where everyone thinks that the news is the truth and the politicians have to be and the governments and the religions and the institutions and the orders like boring, done it, yes. seen it, lived it. Yes. What else can we do now? And that's yeah. what's so cool about becoming a little child where there are no, there's no lanes. They teach us the color within the lines. Like, well, if I, my intention is to create art, I don't see lines. Or maybe my art crosses lines to s share the story that lines are meant to be crossed, whatever, you know. Or you create your own lines. Or you create your own lines. That's right. I have the first true thought in my book is a dedication to my son. And I start with children see magic where grown-ups see logic. Mm. And what you just described is that when we stop being open to the things are not always logical, that there is another dimension to this reality where miracles actually exist, where we can imagine new things. Because if you're all only tapped into the logic of this world, the five senses, you, you will not be able to create any thing new or it would happen very seldom it wouldn't be as easy when you look at a child it is creating new things all the time right. and all these things that are created are being dis, dis, discarded by the grown-ups they will say no that doesn't work that way no this is the way it is right so for me for instance as a child and i've said this so many times i would i was not able to express the things that i wanted to know about this world and mm -hmm. i felt like a victim for a very long time because I had no one to speak with. So I had to figure stuff out by myself. And I know now when I look back at it, if I would have asked the grown-ups, they would have told me how this world yep. works yep. and killed the joy, severed my connection to the, 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 the magician in me because children are very tapped into it. They're playing all the time and creating new things all the time. We are not able to see the things that they create right. because we are not tapped into the frequency. Mm. So that's where the solutions are. A child will always give you a solution. Yes. And you will say, no, that doesn't work that way in this world. Why not? Right. Why not? Because we are tapped into this five sense logical order. Right. That's just one way of looking at it. Right. And the magician gives you many, 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 many more ways, ways of looking at things. It's a question of tapping into some kind of intuitive knowledge, which again, and I will repeat this, <laughs> this Sunday live all the time, is a pattern of information that resides within our sub collective subconscious mind, which means that any one of us can tap into it anytime. Yes. It is in my subconscious mind. It is in your subconscious mind. It's mm. a question of tapping into it. Right. There, there is a verse in Hebrews in the Bible that says, we see then that they could not enter in because of their unbelief. They couldn't enter into where they wanted to go, which was the promised land. But I, I think, forget the promised land, forget the story that I pulled up from the Bible. It's that, we are constantly taught to unbelieve, not believe. It's not real. It's not true. It's this. It's fake. It's fantasy. It's it's childlike. It's it's unbelief. And there's also a verse in in the Bible in the King James version. It says that charity believeth all things. Mm. And I thought, what a fascinating contrast that here the Bible says they couldn't enter in because they don't believe, and then saying that charity believes all things. Well, what does believing all things actually mean? It means that wherever mm -hmm. is, I can play with it. I can be in it. I am not rejecting part of this existence because to reject part of this existence is to reject part of my own experience and my own ability to go in and create. Mm. 
Absolutely. It's like, you know how they say that we're born with a blank state? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mind? Yeah. And I think that Jung actually says we are not born with a blank state of mind. We are born unconscious, which mm -hmm. means that the more you know who you are, the more conscious you are of who you are. And that allows you to tap into all of these different archetypes hmm. that are already there, that are a part, a part of your energy field. You're walking around with them. It's like having a library with all the solutions in this library and not using one book because you don't know how to read. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. That's, that's how much power we are carrying around with us and we're not yeah. tapping into it because it seems like, oh, that's juvenile. Oh, that's childish. Oh, you can't yeah. play around with this. Right. But I do think that you can do that. I do think that emotions can allow your consciousness to expand so that you will tap into the archetypes. Mm. Some mm. things we tap into them without knowing. For instance, when, when, when you give birth to a child, you tap into the archetype of a mother and the father mm -hmm. and you don't you don't know how you do that you don't sit down and you think i need to tap into the archetype of the father you right. just feel when you look at the child you feel in your body and it's the feeling that connects you to the archetype mm -hmm. so if you want to bypass your ego you create the feeling of everything is possible yes and you yeah. tap into the magician so yes. this is tapping into the archetypes on demand and mm. some archetypes, you, you tap into them because we all do. This is a strong archetype, like the, the mother and the father. Yes. The, the central archetype, according to Jung, is the self. Mm. That is also an archetype, which we tap into. And we tap into this when we're children already. And it's, it's, a, it's a natural thing. You mm. don't sit down and say, I'm going to tap into the archetype of the self. You just that's the pattern it's a it's a path that we all walk and we all encounter that energy the pattern the energy pattern or the information field of the self hmm. when our time is ready to do so right so i think that a lot of things in our society shuts down these patterns so we don't think that they are there right and you and i this Sunday are saying they are there and tap yes. into them. Yes. <laughs> Just do yes. it. Yeah. There, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if the audience likes this or not, but I'm going to say another verse in the Bible it says with God, all things are possible with source, all with love and no fear. All things are possible. All mm -hmm. things. For instance, when I was a kid, I was 11 years old. We didn't have any food in the house. My mom grabbed me and said, we got to pray for food. We need food. And so we got on our knees and we prayed for food. And the next day, two paper sacks of fresh produce and food were left at our door. And we don't know. To this day, I have no idea who it was. My mom doesn't know. And I was sharing this story with a buddy. And my buddy said, I have a story like that. I had no money for rent in college. And someone knocked on my door and gave me $200 cash. And he's like, what's this for? He's like, I'm just supposed to give you this cash and walked away. And I'm like, these stories, when we, those seem to be both like the last resort, but it could be the first resort. It could be, and this is where manifestation comes in. This is where creating the reality we want to be is not at that default, but in that, what do I want to create? Why not? someone just give you what you are looking for. They have access to it. They want to give, I'm ready to receive or vice versa. I mean, everything is available and possible and tangible mm -hmm. when we open ourselves up to the magician archetype. Yes, it is because it's about the synchronicity. I hear you when you say that you're, you pray for food and suddenly there's food outside. Well, you tapped into the magician within you, yep. even though you don't know it, you don't know how it happened. It right. just happened. Right. That is one of the traits. You're not supposed to know how it's going to happen. You're supposed to direct the energy mm. and say what it is that you need, want, desire. That is your job. And yep. then, synchronicity 
will arrange it for you because you're tapped into the synchronicity to the fabric of the universe when you're yeah. tapped into the magician within you. Yes. This is yeah. a really strong archetype and I feel like most of us do not are not aware of it unless you are a relentless seeker as I am and you are too yeah. yes wanting to know how this reality is created and wanting to know what kind of power do I actually have in this reality, then it will stay in your shelf of books, which you do not read for the rest of your life. Right. And right. I think that the, the, the ego, the, the, the negative side of the ego that is presenting people uh, a, a reality where you're the victim will keep you you know, not able to read the books that you actually have. Right. right. So you tapping into that, you're not supposed to know how it happened. Hmm. It was just, it, it's there. Yes. Yes. And I think we're coming into a time too, where we will live in a, in a time of miracles. I think that's what I was saying, referencing earlier with the MAGA movement and the three magi and magician and the sixth sense, then we are, I, I really do believe humanity is remembering that the material world is just an illusion to some degree, but also like this always bothered me in, in science and chemistry, but these are floating particles held to, you know, like there's really more space in between the, these particles than there are matter. And mm -hmm when we can really move into that, it's like there's stories of shamans moving and going up to these mountains where there's no door, but they're, they call it a door. There's just cut out piece of rock, but there's no entrance. It stops. And they move through the rock. The Peruvian shamans are they have There's all these writings that the shamans would go and disappear into the rock. Mm. To me, that seems also logical. Like they just figured out the vibrational frequency of that rock. Mm -hmm. And they were able to match it and enter it. There's stories of people walking through doors and appearing like, why not? Mm -hmm. well, we're so stuck in the board. That's what I mean. The machine, this matrix is so boring. It's like, okay, I get it. This is what you want me to know, but that is not all there is to know. That is so ridiculous for me to say that I know it all. That's so boring. That's a boring Yes. And look at academia. They sit there and they're like, <laughs> for the most part, it's just, they're bored. They know it all. But, they're, as, but there's no it, life. Yes. You know, there's no visceralness. There's no river flow of life in it. You, I think as soon as you say that you know it all, you lost the joy of exploring things. I think that we are here to explore the funny rush of a surprise. How would mm. you do that if you know everything? Right. I mean, I would find it utterly boring to know everything. I'm here to, <laughs> to, to be surprised. Yes. It, I yes. feel like sometimes when I look at my life, I feel like I'm playing peekaboo with myself. Hmm. I know something, then I forget, then I know again, then I don't know. And I'm hmm. doing this all the time. This is what makes my life uh, exciting. Yes. Yes. Because how would it look like if I knew everything? Or how would it look like if I always lived in bliss? It would be boring. The word delight keeps coming up. And delight. delight. It's like, oh, oh I delight. delight. It's such a beautiful. And I think delight, D-E-L-I-G-H-T, and mm -hmm. B-Light, yes. B-E-L-I-G-H-T, mm -hmm. are one in the same in a sense that when we are the light and when we expose and illuminate and look and lift up and... Mm -hmm. Try not to sneeze. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> then, <laughs> then we can be surprised. And, and yeah. but there's delight in that. And um, Gloriana says, so if someone wants to feel or get back their hope, faith, the magician archetype is a good one to tap into, right? Because I can sense it's associated with alchemy and transformation. Yes, because you remember things that you need to know because they're already there. So yeah. when you allow that to come through you, when you do not allow the physical stuff or the ego stuff in this world to stop you from doing it, 
you're opening up and it feels like alchemy in your body because it creates different a different cocktail of hormones in your body mm. and it makes you delight in it yes yes the I love the thing when you, when you talk about delight, because it's a question of shining light on the solutions, shining light on the possi possibilities, shining light on your co-creative power here. Yes. When you start doing that, it becomes, it becomes joyful. To yes. Do it. yes. And it's the joy itself that is heightening the frequency it's not the result of what you do it's the mm -hmm. joy of tapping into this and feeling the possibilities hmm. as soon as you do that you just shift your frequency and we've talked about this a thousand times here the quantum field out there is always connected to your frequency your inner frequency your true frequency when you tap into the magician the quantum field starts vibrating on possibility, knowledge, remembering, that's yes. the vibration. And yes. it brings you things in this reality, which helps you to remember, feel the joy. It's a question of, you know, tuning into a vibration within you, which will be mirrored in the physical world. That's yes. the magic behind yes. it. Yes, yes. That is the magic when you're connected to that and it is mirrored back to you in this world. It isn't always mirrored the way you thought it would be. It might be mirrored in a different way, but it will still give you the benefits of your initial wish or desire, whatever it is. Right. The, one of the things I think is so important, Gloriana and anyone listening, when we step into the magician archetype, when we really open up into reclaiming our childlike wonder and exploration in this realm, whatever voice enters in to shut it down. That's stupid. That's not real. What are you doing? Whatever it is, whatever that voice says, it's not your voice. That is an yeah. imprinted voice from someone at some time that shut down that childlike and, and wonder. And when you and I first met, and we've talked about this a, a lot. My dad took residence in my mind. I could hear his voice synonymous with whatever I did. His voice was there constantly taking he lived more in my head than i lived in my head yes i know the favorite never yes you know we talked about this and i will never forget when it was finally out of my head mm -hmm. and when it finally was out out mm -hmm. that's when things really i stopped i started i really actually i restarted creation again in my own world no child's like well this is stupid someone had to come in and implant that creation of the child is dumb that's not real unicorns don't exist however mm -hmm. i just showed my daughter these archaeologists found a horned horse's head in uh, somewhere in turkey mm -hmm. who's to say we don't know my point is like Whatever voice says that's dumb or and it limits the magician, we have to pause and say, okay, that's not from me. What do I really want to create? That voice is such a such a sneaker. <laughs> it's such a stinker. It ruins the fun. It ruins the delight, I guess, is what I'm saying. It's like right when we want to delight, that voice, if it comes in, can shut it down. Mm, absolutely. I think that because we are so programmable as children and our parents are not aware of it. Uh, they give us blueprints and patterns of thoughts, pathology of how this world works. Hmm. And that shuts, I think that shuts us down from the archetype of the magician, the field of energy that is there from, from pre-birth. Yeah. They shut that thing down and you can't enter it until you start seeking it. Right. What you seek, you will always find in this reality. It is the question of the frequency and the mirroring back in 3D reality. So whatever it is that you're seeking, consciously or unconsciously, will be there in your reality. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you have parents that always tell you, no, that's not possible. No, 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 no. Then no is what you get back. You will always be you will always be in a no state. 
Yeah. If I tell you that you can tap into the magician, the first thing that will come up in your mind will be no. Hmm. No, that's the voice. If you try it, you will feel the energy because it is a pre-existing pattern in your own energy field. Mm -hmm. It is ex exactly the same way as the things that you learned when you were a child. Mm. Everything that you remember exists in the same way as these archetypes. It's just a question of tapping into them and allowing that energy to set an emotion in your body so that it will change the hormonal cocktail in your mind and allow you to literally control your heart rate, your breathing, all of these things are controlled mm -hmm. from that. And you can feel that you become more free when you breathe easily, when you are the magician, when you play like a child, I am the magician, feeling yes. all the possibilities, yes. not allowing yourself to drop back into you know, the victimhood or the martyrdom or whatever it is that your your ego is trying to do to you right. to shut you down from that powerhouse. Right. Because these archetypes are they are they are a, showing a path which might make it easier for you to, you know, create what it is that you want in your reality, not something that they thought and taught you or told you. Right. It's more a question of what you want to create in this reality. Right. You can't tap into the magician with your father's voice in your head. Mm. You have to, as you say, be free from that and tap yeah. into it. Yes. Say no to it. Anytime it says that's stupid, don't right. do that. Right. The We started these ego conversations or um, a few weeks back talking about that ego is not bad. It's not a bad thing. It's that there's the negative and positive side of ego and the positive side of ego it, are these archetypes. Yes. They yes. are. They are the, they're a container. They're a filter. They're a, a mask per se for me to put on and say, okay, I'm going to see through yes. this, this lens yes. and the warrior is going to see through this lens and the lover is going to see through this lens and the sovereign will see, but their lenses to play with. And every child that I have ever known, including my own children, yes. love to dress up, love to play, which is why Halloween is such a fun thing. They love to, I know the really beautiful picture you have of your son, the suit, you know, the Superman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to find it here. Where did I put it? There it is. This one. Yes. I love yes. that. This is the positive side of ego. It is to put something on and to look through it and say, what does it feel like to look through this? These archetypes get to be something so beautiful for us. Mm -hmm. And they're really a, the greatest gift that we could ever have been given is these archetypes. Yes. It's a question of, I really love where you're going with this because it's a question of suiting up, putting yes. on a yes. playing with it. Because playing. when you start playing with it, it becomes a part of you and it gives you a possibility to explore something that you cannot do unless you have that mask, unless right. you have that suit. Yes. So for, for my son, if I would give him another, you know, t-shirt, he would say, I'm an ordinary man. Yeah. It's not me. <laughs> no, totally. It's not Clark Kent saving the world. It's not, um, this uh, is the one doing yes, it. Yes. It's the, it's the, Oh, that's so cool. It is so, the more I detach from the matrix and the 3D world and the machine, the more I'm able to come into this. And there are those I talk to, they don't get it and it's okay, but I get it for myself and I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast in my marriage. I'm having a blast as a father. I'm having a blast in my professional career. I'm having a blast creating these with you. It is so fun to just step into and be like, wow. Mm -hmm. And it's not inauthentic. It's our most authentic, clear vision yes. looking through these masks. It's not pretending it is it, but it's just choosing how we want and what we need to do in this present moment. Mm -hmm. Abs absolutely. Playing the magician I think I've done it my entire life, but I didn't share it with anyone. 
for yeah. instance, sitting in my bed thinking, where does the universe end? Mm. Trying to figure this out. And I feel this tingling feeling and I'm like, oh, I'm roaming it, trying to find where does it end? Yes. To allow myself to play with things in my imagination just for the joy of it. Yes. I don't, I don't need it. I just do it because it feels fun to do. It raises my frequency. And when, when my frequency is raised, I might get something from the quantum field that surprises me in a pleasant way. Yes. And that's what, that's what this life is about. Yes. Understanding that my frequency, whatever lens I'm choosing to look from, if I wake up in the morning and dress up like this, or I sit in my martyrdom or victimhood, the reality out there will match that. Yes, that's right. I choose this every single time. This is what I choose every yeah. single time. That's really cool. That's really, really beautiful. And it gets back to we are we get to be the own heroes, our own heroes of our story and the hero's journey. And yes, yes. Exploring that. Yeah. You know, I always knew that we are the ones that we have been waiting for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going back in this loop that we were, yep. we are the saviors of ourselves. We are yep. the heroes of our own story. Yes. And we become the heroes when we realize that everything is okay. Mm. We become the heroes when we can look back and say, wow, that was painful, but look at me, I made it. Yes, yes. And to realize that we are the creators of our own reality. Yes. Not to fall asleep, but to stay awake. Because the more, the more we become conscious, the easier it becomes to tap into these frequencies that we are talking about, these, yeah. these archetypes. It's easier because the more conscious you are, the more you know who you are, the, the more you allow yourself to feel the high frequencies because you know that you can contain all of them. Right. Which makes it easier to play with the archetypes, yes. which makes it easier to use them as you use a book hmm. or a dress or, <laughs> yes. a or whatever yes. it is. Yes, yes. Because you're here to explore things in the now moment. Hmm. Hmm. And the now moment is your point of power. The now moment is where you on demand can shift your frequency yes. by Feeling it in your pineal gland, starting to move your hands and saying, yes. I am the magician of this. Mm -hmm. What do I want? What does the magician in me say? Yes. All I need to remember is this. And tapping into it, allowing it to be what it is. It doesn't matter if everyone around you would say, you're going crazy. That yeah. doesn't work. Right. It, it truly doesn't, matter. doesn't yes. matter. It does not matter. It does yeah. not create matter. Actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. There's no matter there. Oh, uh, this, um, this is fun. This is this is, I think, my most favorite archetype. It's definitely my most favorite to talk about. The warrior is necessary for all of us, and I've, you know, but it's so task oriented. It seems like okay, I got to suit up to do this or accomplish this. The magician's just like. Have fun being you because mm -hmm. we, uh, the Eunice, the unique Eunice, and I don't think there's an accident that you, Y O U, and you, the letter U, uniqueness mm -hmm. is it's all the same sound and vibration. And it is so beautiful when we can reclaim who we are and play again in this realm heal the child wound, reclaim our child's wonder, be the effervescent, beautiful beings that we we're meant to be, have conversations, invite others out to play again and remind ourselves that no matter where we are, we have choice to create. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, when you said you, the letter U, it, it, it looks like this. It's like a chalice. It, it mm -hmm. So good. That's so it holds you. Yes. You decide what comes in. You're the gatekeeper of that. You decide what comes in. Hmm. You decide what you believe. You decide what you want to play around with. You decide. Hmm. So just tapping into it. I, I also love to talk about the magician because it is limitless. Yeah. 
Yeah. It is limitless. And I'm such a, I love knowing things. I love the knowledge, be it wisdom or, you know, hidden knowledge or in your face knowledge. I yeah. love to explore different, different things. So this yes. suits me very well. The warrior is, as you say, task oriented and it's more contained. It's not as expansive as the magician. Right. And the same thing goes for the lover. Hmm. One, the other archetype that I really love to tap into, the lover in me always gives me the right answer. The hmm. magician might give me something, it will give me the right answer, but it is connected to my ego and it's more playful and sometimes it might not be exactly as I wanted it. But if I tap into the lover in me and when I have an obstacle with my family, with my son hmm. or my husband, I do not tap into the magician. I tap into the lover. In me mm, that's good. Because yeah. I know that it will always give me the right answer. Mm. I tap into the magician. Let's say that I don't know how to figure something out and my family is involved in it like a trick or something. I don't know how to fix it. I tap into the magician in me and I know the res what I, I, I can do in order to fix it. Yes. But when it's like, you know, when you have a, a, a problem that you need to solve between me and my son, for instance, if yeah. I feel like there's something off in the energy and I need to heal it, it's always the lover. In me. Yeah, but yeah. Maybe next week we talk about the lover. That'd be beautiful. That'd be beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I know that it's probably the same thing for you, that yes. magician and the lover are the ones that are always communicating with each other. Yes. Because yes. These archetypes, when you tap into, you can tap into more than one of them and you will have a communication between yes. them. You could say, yes. what would the magician in me say? And then you tap into the lover. What would the lover in me say? And then you tap into the both of them and allow the magician to literally create what the lover says it's supposed to create. Mm, I love that. Yes. So I love that. Yeah. Mm. Next week, then that's what we'll do. It'll be great. So, yes. We talk about the love archetype, the lover. Next I week. love it. I love that. I um, love it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks everyone. Uh, Gloriana, thanks for the great question and everyone will see you next Sunday. See you next Sunday. Bye guys. Bye.